Hi folks, this particular video will be, uh, well, there's a whole bunch of questions like math that math teachers like to give you. When you're taking a course on um, parabolas or quadratics, there's often situations where businesses have to look at a graph and say, what's the best price we should charge? And they're looking for that sweet spot because over here, this is called the revenue, okay? So the y-axis here is the revenue and it's how much money is being made. And that's often the goal of a business. And they're trying to make the most money possible to get to this maximum right here. Okay? And sometimes there's, you know, to get this revenue or the exact same revenue, which is right here, they can either charge a very cheap price or a very expensive price, but they end up getting the same amount of money as revenue. Because if it's cheap, lots of people will buy it, but you're making less money. And if it's expensive, um, you're selling less, but you're making more money for each thing. So businesses have to choose that sweet spot right here at the top where they're making the most money possible while not making it too expensive or too cheap. And so, yeah, I'm going to erase this now. And just remember this, revenue, with questions like this when it comes to many of these questions, did I spell that right? Revenue. <laughs> okay, yes, it is spelled right. It's the price that you charge. Okay, you take the price and you multiply that by how many, by the number of whatever it is. Could be tickets, for example. Could be whatever. The number of items that you're selling multiplied by the price, that's your revenue. Of course, there's other costs involved, like how much it costs to make the item, etc. But in this case here, we're just talking about price and the number of items sold, okay? And today's question is going to be about what's the best ticket price to charge? It's a word problem, and we're going to have to solve it. Normally, you'd be able to factor it um, just by factoring, but sometimes you need to go beyond that and use the quadratic formula if the numbers are not so easy to deal with. Then you deal with the quadratic formula, and I have a whole video on how to use the quadratic formula. This video will not go into detail about how to use the quadratic formula. I'm simply just going to use it. Okay? All right. So let's get back to the question. It's a bus company. There's 4,000 passengers every day. Each passenger pays a fare of $2. The company notices that each time they raise the price, each time it goes up by 15 cents, every time it's increased, the company loses 40 passengers. People say, okay, that's just too much money. 15 cents more. 40 people say, I am going to ride my bicycle or take my car or hitchhike. But if the company needs to bring in $10,450 per day, what should the ticket price be? What would the best ticket price be? Now, just like I was saying before, when we had that graph, you might come up with, let's say that this was the magic number of 10,450 right here. Let's say this was the best price. There's going to be two answers to our parabola. Obviously, I would, if I were this company, I would pick the lower of the, the two prices because you want to make it look like you're charging less. And even if the revenue is the same, you still want to go with this answer right here, the cheaper one. Okay, so we're going to try and f get a situation where we come up with this answer right here in order to get $10,450. Okay, so let's do that together. Whoops, and I didn't mean to get rid of, I wanted to keep this right here. Revenue is price times the number. So how would you come up with this? Well, the price, the original price that the bus company has been charging is $2. $2. But they're talking about increasing the ticket price. So that's a plus. They want to increase the ticket price by 15 cents or $0.15. So if they increase it once, it would be $2.15. If they increased it twice, it would be $2.30. We're trying to find the number of increases in the price that would give them the most revenue. In fact, the revenue of the 10,450. But anyway, each time there's an increase in price, we're going to call that x. So over here you could write, you know, let x be the number of increases in price. I'm just not writing that here because I'm afraid the writing will be so messy 
and cluttered, I just want you to know that X is the number of increases in the price. Okay? So, when they sell the ticket for $2, they tend to get 4,000 daily passengers. There's 4,000 daily, in this case, tickets that are sold to go on the bus. 4,000 passengers. But every time they increase the price by 15 cents, they lose, so that's a minus, they lose 40 passengers every time they increase. So if the, if the price is increased once, there would just be one increase here. One times 40 is just 40. If they increase the price twice, so 30 cents, they would lose not 40 passengers, they would lose two times 40 passengers, which is 80 passengers. So you put the X right here and you also put it over here. Now, the revenue that we're looking for, we're looking for these two numbers to make the revenue, and the revenue we're looking for specifically here is this number right here, 10,450. There it is. That's how much revenue we're looking for. So here we have an equation. If we were just to punch this into Desmos, and we will, we'll show you this after this question is solved, just to verify that we got the right answer, we would quickly see what the best price to charge is. But you're not allowed to just go ahead on a math test and use Desmos. You actually have to come up with the answer by factoring this thing. Okay? So one way to do it would be to quickly um, put this whole quadratic equation, put it into what we call standard form, and then use the quadratic formula to solve it. Okay, so let's do that. Takes a bit of work, and I'll probably need more space than what you see here. What we're going to do is multiply this out using, um, we're going to expand these two things called binomials, and there's whole videos on all of that. So you'd go 2 times 4,000, you would get 8,000. Then you would go 2 times negative 40, which would be negative 80. Don't forget the x. Then, I've already used a calculator and multiplied 0 0.15 times 4,000, just to speed things up. And you end up getting 600. Don't forget the x. And then you go 0.15 times negative 40, and you end up getting negative 6. And because x times x, you get x squared. Okay, it is a quadratic and every quadratic always has a squared when you'd put it in standard form like we're about to do. So what I'm going to do now is bring this 10,450 over to this side. And when you do that, you have to subtract it and you're subtracting it from both sides. So we're going to subtract it, leaving us with zero here. And on this side, I'm just going to put everything in order. So negative 6x squared, I would put in front because most quadratics are written with the squared here first. Next would be our like terms of negative 80x and 600x. If you put them together, you end up with positive 520x. And remember before I just said we're going to take 10,450 and subtract it from both sides. So 8,000 minus 10,450, if you do that on a calculator, you will get negative 2,450. Huge numbers, I know. It is a business situation, so huge numbers are normal. Now, just factoring this thing out is possible sometimes, but in this case, we're going to jump right into the quadratic formula. Okay? The quadratic formula, if you've watched my other video, is simply um, there once was a negative boy. The boy couldn't decide whether to stay or go to a radical party. But the boy was square, so he did not go. He stayed, and he missed out on four awesome cookies. And the party was over at 2 a.m. Now, I'm not including the M because it's supposed to be just 2A. So I go, 2A, mm-hmm. Anyway, so negative B. Well, here's the B value right here. The A value is right here, and the C value is right here. So let's quickly punch those in. Um, negative B would be negative 520. And we have, sorry, plus or minus the square root of B squared. Well, if you go 520 squared, it's a huge number. You can try it on your calculator. 
you get 270,400. Feel free to do that on your calculator if you like. I'm going to have to make this longer. Minus 4 times A, which is negative 6, multiplied by B, which is negative 2,400. Did I say B? I meant C. So we've put all these numbers in. Don't forget the denominator, 2AM, or 2A, which is 2 times negative 6. Nice and simple. Whew, look at this. It's crazy looking, right? So if you were to multiply this all out on your calculator, and I'm going to let you do that, you would get negative 520 plus or minus. Now here's the part I'm just going to tell you the answer to. You're welcome to try this on a calculator. Try going this number minus this times this times this. Take your answer and take the square root of it, and you should get, if you do it correctly, 460. I'm not kidding. It actually works out nicely to 460. Feel free to pause and try that yourself. And on the bottom, we know this is negative 12. So we're going to get two answers in this question. We're going to get one answer when you add up the negative 520 plus 460 divided by negative 12. And we're going to get another answer when we go negative 520 minus 460 divided by negative 12. We get two different answers, and those answers happen to be 5. And the other answer is 81.7. So remember back to this little, hmm, I had drawn a little graph earlier. It looked like this. And it was a parabola. Um, the parabola showed we were looking for two spots where we could get a revenue of 10,450. And those two spots happen to be the number of increases in the price happened to be five increases in the price to get that answer or 81.7. I'm assuming that the bus company does not want to charge huge prices on their ticket price in order to get that, that big number. They would be in the newspaper with um, people saying how terrible their price is. So five increases in the price means five increases in the price. Well, we know that the price is 2 plus 0 0.15 times x. So let's do this in a different color just so we can see it properly. So if we had 0 0.15, and if we had 5 increases in the price, we would multiply that by 5. So all we have to do now is take our calculator and go 0 0.15, 0 0.15 times 5. We see that the best ticket price would be 75 cents added on to the $2 to start with. So the best ticket price that we could possibly charge would be $2.75. That would give us a revenue of 10450 that we were looking for. So $2.75 is the ultimate ticket price. And if this question had said, um, how many tickets would they sell? You would just say 5 times 40. Well, that's 5 times 40 is 200. And you would say, well, they sold um, 200 minus 4,000. So 3,800 tickets would be sold for $2.75. So this is the ultimate selling price in order to get this particular revenue. Um, let's have a look at the graph of that. I use Desmos to punch this in. And over here are the two numbers that we get. This is the 5 that we, were, that we got, and this is the 81 point, you know, 7 that we got. And this happens to be the best ticket price we can charge. And uh, over down here is the x-axis right here. Here's the y-axis. And here is this blue line here is the 10,450 that this question was looking for. So this is the price that makes the bus company the happiest right here five increases in the price. Be careful, that doesn't mean five dollars. That just means five increases in the ticket price. And that's how we came up with the two dollars and seventy-five cents as the best ticket price possible. I hope that makes sense. These questions are very popular in math, these types of questions. And I do have other videos 
that have other scenarios in case your situation with your question is a little bit different than this one. Just check for my other videos that have to do with finding the maximum revenue. Okay, good luck. Take care.